This will be a presentation on Peter Saker by George Class Peters Jr. Peter was born in Copenhagen in 1901, but then migrated to the United States and stayed here until his passing in 1950, where he passed away in Ardsley, New York. The Danish-American photographer first studied in New York in 1929 to 1934 in painting, but then transitioned to studying photography in his time. He was active from 1936 to 1945 through the photographs that you'll see upcoming. These were his time periods of really ethical evaluation work where his art was considered for real gravitas and um, artistic value along with conveying information. Whereas in 1945, he shifted toward more commercial work and that work took him until his untimely passing. His, the context of his work is he was hired as a photographer for various U.S. agencies and magazines and collections after spending time and taking photographs with friends and mentors and fellow photographers such as Bernice Abbott, Ben Sean, and Walker Evans. In terms of awards, he was the recipient of the Museum of Modern Art's Image of Freedom Award three times over, so his images are well known and he's a well-documented photographer. He first started off as a sign painter, but then transitioned into capturing the human condition in the Great Depression era, which is why his work is really ethically evaluated. But if you can still look at them for their overall aesthetic value, you can look at them for their, inform in their, for their informative value, but you can also see that there's multimodality in the photos and in the images throughout giving you the life through the color the lack thereof and the wording the text that is in each photograph but sometimes there is just bold pictures with full bull's eye images of subjects in the black and white to capture the full emotion of the moment with the diffused lighting if you go on you see that he took more of an anthropologist view on photography in that his work was really just capturing rather than judging or giving opinion or adding commentary but overall you can see that his work was just capturing the human condition without giving any insider's perspective. He took a lot of time to bring an outsider's perspective, actually, since he wasn't a U.S. citizen. He could see what the U.S. was going through in a vacuum or in a fishbowl, and he could report that to those magazines for the U.S. agencies. And it was really telling the story of Americans in the Great Depression, or those who lived in America in the Great Depression. The lack of color in a lot of photos, it lends to the subject really popping out and giving you a lot of information and a lot of answers as to what the photo is trying to convey. He uses a lot of stylistic tools like the background and foreground to bring out the subjects. The rule of thirds is often implemented in his work, but mostly you see some symmetry in some photos. But the main subject of his photo is the human condition and conveying exactly what was going on in the time period without giving commentary or without giving judgment overall. Yeah, so I think this is an apt photo to end on. When you see it, you think of the plight of the humans that lived in America during the Great Depression. The darkness in the doorway shows that there isn't much hope coming out, but the light of the children and the light of the individual show the pain and the anguish that they're going through, but that there is a brighter future perhaps ahead. So the juxtaposition of his foreground and background in his work really do a lot to bring out emotion and characterize the photos that he took throughout his time frame.